rather horrendous designs and mechanizations of our federal government structure that I feel directly imperiled not to tell anybody about, so that's why I'm here telling you. In doing so, I am breaking my security oaths. I am also guilty of breaking major federal law. How, how long I'll be able to do this, anybody's guess. However, I would like to mention this talk is going to be broken up into four main topics. And, uh, each of these topics will have some bearing on what you people are involved in, you patriot people or even some of you people that aren't patriots that may be leaning in that way or considering it. I want you to know these United States are a beautiful place. I've traveled in over 70 countries and I cannot remember any country that has the beauty as well as the magnificence of its people like these United States. Uh, I'll give you an overview of basically what I am. I started off went through engineering school, which half of my schooling was in the field. And I built up a reputation for being a geological engineer as well as a structural engineer with, with both military and aerospace applications. I have helped build two main concern bases within these United States that have some significance as far as what is it called the New World Order. Number one is Dulce, New Mexico. I was involved in 1979 in a horrendous firefight with alien human, alien human type, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I was one of the survivors. I'm probably the only talking survivor you'll ever hear. Two other survivors are under close guard somewhere in these United States. One is not in very good shape. He's been living in uh, Canada. So I'm about the only one around that knows the firefight, that knows all the detailed files of the entire operation. 66 Secret Service agents, FBI and the like, Black Berets died in that firefight. I was there. Number one, part of what I'm going to tell you is going to be very shocking. Part of what I'm going to tell you is probably going to be very unbelievable. So, if instead of putting on your glasses, I'll ask you to put your skepticals on rather than your spectacles. But please feel free to do your own homework. I know the Freedom of Information Act isn't much to go on, but unfortunately it's basically the best we've got. Uh, your local law library and your nearest law university is a good place to look for congressional records. So if one continues to do their homework, um, and one can be standing vigilant in regards to their country. I love the country that I'm living in more than I love my life. I would not be standing before you right now risking my life by telling you these things if I didn't believe it so. The first part of this talk is going to concern deep underground military bases and the black budget. Let me first start by emphasizing the black budget. The black budget is a secretive group, basically a secret budget. It garners one quarter of the gross national product, the entire gross national product of these United States present, the gross national product is around $5 trillion, so one quarter of that's about one, one and a quarter trillion dollars per year. Uh, at least $1.023 trillion, and I say at least, is used in black budget programs like deep underground military bases. <coughs> Presently, there are 129 deep underground military bases in these United States. <coughs> Is this our? No, this one doesn't work. Oh. I don't know. This one's too tall. Anyway, of these 129 bases, they've been building them day and night unceasingly for since the early 40s. 
some of them were built even earlier than that. Uh, these bases composed, comprised, these bases, these bases comprised basically of large cities underground. They're connected by high-speed monorail magnetoleviton trains that can go up to Mach 2. Uh, books have been, uh, several books recently have been written about this activity, all of which is verifiable through bibliography. Uh, I think Al Bielik will, uh, uh, unfortunately, Al Bielik has my only copy uh, of, uh, is Al Bielik here, by the way? Can Al Bielik? Yes, please do. <coughs> Richard Souter's book, He's a Ph.D. architect, and he's written, he alone also is uh, risking his life by talking about this. He worked uh, with a number of government agencies on deep underground military bases. Okay, there are 129 of these in these United States. In around where you live, in Idaho, there are 11 of them. It's a very large number. The average depth of each base is roughly a mile deep. They are basic whole cities hollowed out underground. They are somewhere between two and two thirds cubic miles and four, cu four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. You might ask how this is done. Well, right now they have laser drilling machines that can drill a tunnel seven miles in one day. Obviously, we the public don't uh, have a in this and so on. We're not told about this. So unfortunately, I don't believe these things. Uh, the black pro projects as we know them sidestep Congress, which is illegal. Uh, right now, the New World Order is depending upon these bases, and if I'd known it was the New World Order involved, I wouldn't have had anything to do with them. And I, I would lie to rather extensively. So. Uh, basically, they the technology as we know it for every calendar year that goes by, every 12 month calendar year, the military technology increases about 44 and a half years. This is why it's easy to understand that back in 1943 they were able to create a, through vacuum tube technology, uh, a ship that literally disappeared from one place and reappeared 400 miles later in another place. Uh, my father, Otto Oscar Schneider, there's an interesting story about him. Um, he fought on both sides of the war. He was originally a U-boat captain. He was captured. Came off, he was captured by the French. He was turned over to the United States Army and turned over to the United States Navy. He was repatriated here to Cocoa Beach, Florida and Fort Lauderdale and uh, taken up to uh, uh, Philadelphia Navy Yard thereafter. And he was a master machinist as well as uh, an MD doctor. He later became an MD doctor and never did anything with it. But basically, he was involved with uh, uh, different kinds of concerns, uh, such as uh, A-bomb and H-bomb and, and uh, Philadelphia Experiment uh, and these other kinds of projects. Uh, his groundwork, he, he invented a camera, a high-speed camera that took pictures of the first atomic tests in Bikini Island on the 12th of July, 1946, to which I have original photographs of, which show unidentified flying objects fleeing the bomb site at a high rate of speed. Bikini Island at the time was infested with things and, and various deaths.